please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, as you heard, my name is Aisha Bilaribaba. I'm a lecturer with the Department of History, Usman Danfodio University, Sokoto, Nigeria. I teach history and culture, but my area of specialization is on gender history. So I have a conference to attend in Shellfield. I decided to share some knowledge and information on some cultural ties between French and Senegal. And as a historian, I want to share this experience with you this afternoon. Thank you, Chair. Uh, as the title entails, From Imperialism to Diplomacy, an historical analysis of French and Senegal cultural relationship. Uh, the question that may come into your mind is why Senegal and French? Uh, French has colonized Africa, and there are a lot of colonies French colonies in Africa, but I'm more particular about Senegal because of certain reasons. Senegal have been in contact with French ever before colonization took place since the 17th century. There was a kind of trade relationship that exists between Senegal and French when St. Louis became a trading port for the French. Secondly, again, uh, it was in Senegal that the colonial policy first instituted by French, known as the assimilation policy, took place in Senegal within the four communes of the, 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 the Senegal. This is another reason. And thirdly, large number of French during the colonial period settled down in Senegal and a lot of cultural ties existed between Senegal and French. So their culture is so much tied that we need to share it together. Thank you. So I started my paper with a very, uh, I mean, with an introduction trying to show the historical linkage between Senegal and French. I say France and Senegal shared a special relationship for over 300 years that dated back to 17th century. St. Louis was the first permanent French settlement in Senegal. Its geographical position meant that it commanded trade along the Senegal River. The four communes of Senegal, that is Gori, Dakar, Rafisco, and St. Louis, were the only place during the African colonial period where African inhabitants were granted the same right as French. How do you, uh, fr uh, French, uh, uh, Africans become French men, but in African city, that is in their native land, they become French men by accepting the custom and the culture of French. As the capital of Fr French West Africa, during the colonial period, Senegal was France's most important African territory. The French had a more concentrated and central presence there than in other colonies. So its culture became particularly uh, ingrained into Senegalese life. Just like we said, colonization, politically, socially, and economically. That was what happened. So culturally, they assimilated the French culture and become French citizens. Uh, the two countries have maintained a close ties since political independence. In spite of Senegal obtaining its independence in 1960, it has maintained a positive relationship with France. And many elements of French culture introduced during the colonial period remain an important part of Senegal's identity. Now, the funniest part of it was that while colonization was coming to an end, when other African countries were demanding for independence, separation between them and the colonizers, in the situ in situation of Senegal, there was this kind of continuation in such a way that Senegalese wanted the con to continue the relationship between them and the French. And this has to do with the, the, the transfer of the French culture 
into the indigenous people that they felt that they want to continue being French men. Uh, I have a literature review here trying to look at some scholarly articles by some scholars, what they said about the language, the, the colonial language policy. I say since the beginning of the 1960s, there have been a number of studies devoted in part or entirely to French colonial language policy in Africa. Some of these studies have described the French language policy as being motivated by socio-political considerations whereby Africans were subjected to a policy of cultural assimilation. I quoted Crowder, 1967, Spencer, 1971, and many others. I see other scholars also have characterized it as an instance of linguistic imperialism and ethnocentrism. Uh, while still others have viewed it as the result of perceived mutual social economic interests between the colonizers and the colonized. I, among such scholars was Alexandra, who I cited by saying, or in court, the imposition of French as the sole language in colonial Francophone Africa was simply an extension of French monolingual policy adopted in the, in, the, in the 16th century, and that its continuation to the detriment of African languages in the 1950s was due in part to the express wishes of African intellectuals to use French as the medium of instruction in French-based system. Among African scholars who consider imperial policies to the detriment of Africans was Ngugi. According to him, cultural imperialism annihilates a people's belief in their names, their language, in their environment, in their heritage of struggle, in their unity, in their capacity, and ultimately in themselves. This is where we're talking about cultural imperialism that by Ngugi. He felt that by adopting a French name, by adopting a French way of life, by by, 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 by adopting a French style, a, a, a French maybe menu, is a kind of mental colonization by dropping African culture and accepting the Western culture or the imperial culture. I say French imperialism in Senegal. The French colonial position began in 1884 when the European powers sat in Berlin that is in Germany, and carve an entire continent with a multiplicity of people's cultures and languages into different colonies. That was when the Portuguese colonizes part of Africa and they become Portuguese. They speak Portuguese language, like where I come from. We speak English because we are being colonized by the British. It all started in Berlin in 1884 to 1885. That was where the whole history began. The real aim of colonialism was to control the people's world, what they produce, how they produce it, and how it was distributed. To control, in other words, the entire realm of the language real life. Colonialism imposed its control of the social production of wealth through military conquest, that is in some places, and subsequent political dictatorship. But its most important area of domination was the mental universe of the colonized, the control through culture of how people perceive themselves and their relationship to the world. The fact that the goal of colonialism was universal. Extra economic benefit for colonizing government, France as poor an additional goal of transforming the Africans, while other European uh, nations like British diverted a means of colonizing people that is through the system of indirect truth system. The French introduced its own system which began with the assimilation policy. France imposed an, uh, I mean, uh, and I mean uh, the, 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 the Senegal was where French first introduced that system of assimilation. Though later on it was transformed 
into another system known as association. But the focus of my talk is on the assimilation policy. Nowhere is, is this effort epitomized better than in Senegal. French, however, took the idea of a united French empire a step further with a policy of assimilation. I have some countries here uh, in Africa where French colonizes, but I said my emphasis here is on Senegal. I said the French assimilation policy was based on the idea of expanding French culture to the colonies outside French or outside France. Natives of these colonies were considered French citizens as long as the culture and customs were adopted. This also meant that they will have the right and duties of French citizens. They have the right to education, they have the right to health, they have the right to other facilities as enjoy in the metropole. The enforcement of this policy was so strict that the printing or publication of books in African language for use in so-called village schools was subjected to a tax of 12.8%. Imported books in other languages like German and English were levied the same amount of tax by the customs service. The French colonial language policy evolved a series of decrees, ordinances, official memoranda, struck communiques, and practical decisions made by colonial administration, administrators in the colonies. The most important piece of legislation that shaped the evolution of the French colonial language policy in Africa was the Metropolitan Ordinance of Villas Corrects, issued in 1539 by King Francois I. This ordinance made French the exclusive official language of the French kingdom, thus disallowing the use of Breton, Basque, Flemish, and other such as Germans. The logic of French educational and language policy was to have the acceptance and cooperation of the indigenous through diplomacy. That is why I caught a scholar, George Babinot, who says that there is no other way, no direct, more substantial, no shorter way to get to know a people than by learning their language. So it's easier when you get the language of the colonizer. So language is one of the major ways that a culture is perpetuated. The policy of assimilation was not limited to culture alone. It played out in multiple arenas politically. The Senegals were granted representation in the chambers. These they put it in 1848. Notably over a century before any other West African state, Residents of St. Louis and Gori were granted French citizenship, including voting rights in 1848. This African elite become known as the origines. That is those who adopted the French culture. They become origines. The origines, if literate in French and familiar with French customs, they could work in administrative institution and participate in the political and social life of the colony. However, as, as I have said, the granting of the citizenship was limited to these four communes I have mentioned earlier. It has not affected other areas. So it's like Senegal, where my focus is, is the only place where these citizens obtain this right. Because there are a lot of criticism over the policy. That was why they have to shift to association policy later on. I consider from the point of view that French imperialist policies created a close tie between the metropole and the colonies, even after the decolonization process. I'm talking about here after the independence. The first president of Senegal was able to continue, uh, that is in person of Leopold Sedo Senghor. He continued with the relationship between the former colonizers and Senegal. Despite the fact that uh, he was known to have created a kind of cultural renaissance in Senegal, 
trying to revive the African culture, the indigenous uh, uh, culture by creating some centers, but still that relationship between French and Senegal continue up to the time in 1981 when he abdicated the throne, when he resigned, that is uh, President Leopold Sedo. Even his uh, 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 successors continue, but later on, the relationship uh, started to decay. But uh, this is a very pointer to... The aim was that by making Senegalese citizens equal to French citizens, Senegal will have greater leverage in its relationship to France. That was the reason why President uh, Sendo continued with the uh, 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 cultural tie. As such, the movement towards an independent Senegal was a bloodless one, as the Senegalese did not want to cut ties with the nation who had informed so much of their society. Because of these cultural ties, that even when other African countries, like I have said, wanted independence, Senegalese never wanted it. So when, even when it came, it was such a kind of bloodless, there was no war. So they have been so much acculturated, assimilated to each other. French and Senegalese diplomatic relationships, that is in the post-independence. I say one of the most defining diplomatic partners Senegal has after the independence was France. Uh, Leopold Sedo, the first president of independent Senegal, advocated close relationship with France. And negotiation and compromise as the best means of resolving international differences was the approach of President Seydou. As a result of the cultural ties between Senegal and France, Senegal has been in the forefront in supporting functional integration among French-speaking West African states through the West African economics a monetary union. While insisting on defining a truly African identity, Senghor emphasized certain aspects of French culture within Senegal, including language. He made French the official state language, a policy for which he received much criticism. After independence, he still insists that French has to be the official language in Senegal. Uh, Although approximately one third of the population belongs to the Wolof ethnic group, and Wolof is spoken by more than 70% of the population, French remains the official language of Senegal. And proficiency in it still increases educational opportunity, access to the media, the career mobility in Senegal. To instead French, a language that only a certain percentage of the population speaks as a national language, ensure that France and Senegal will forever be ingrained into their cultural and national character. The promotion of French language and French culture and language, that is La Francophone in Senegal, and support for higher education become the priority of the French government by supporting uh, uh, I mean, education in Senegal because of the use of the French language. Students continue to attend their education in Paris. High percentage, uh, about uh, as of 2013, the data shows that about 9,000 students are studying from Senegal are studying in Paris. To this end, France supports a number of education institutions in Senegal, and itself remains the preferred destination for Senegalese students. That is when I mentioned the figure. Uh, in terms of economic ties, more than 250 French firms operate in Senegal today. That is over 100 of them subsidiaries of French companies or with minority shareholders in Senegal's firms. The remainder are mainly small and medium-sized French-owned business established locally under Senegal's law. These firms produce in excess of about 2 billion euros of goods and services annually and account for 20% of the total employment in the former sector, with more than 90% of staff recruited locally. I have uh, some of the major French companies in Senegal. 
Uh, we have France Telecom owns about 42.3% of telephone operator Sonatel. We have Elfage, a civil engineering company, investing about 87 million in euro, uh, 87 million, that is in a euro 202 million project to design, build, and operate a new toll motorway from the car to the I mean, near the construction. We have Sen Sen Senegalese Des X, subsidiary of the SO Group. We have Society General D. Banquis, AU Senegal, subsidiary of Society General of France, and so many others. These are to show you that even after the independence, these cultural ties continue to exist. Uh, a lot of French investors are there in Senegal. The maintenance of extensive cultural ties, however, benefited both France and Senegal. Each of the two countries continues to be an important part of the other's foreign relation, with regular official ministerial visit in either direction. France's largest embassy in sub-Saharan Africa is in Dakar, that is the capital of Senegal. And Senegal traditionally sent one of its most senior diplomats to Paris. Nonetheless, there was a distinct cooling in relationship in relation during the latter part of the Wade presidency as French concern about governance issues increased. That was a political uh, a politics that was being played during the presidency of President Wade with the French, which uh, 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 Wade was suspecting the French not in support of his presidency. So there's this has nothing to do with what I'm focusing on. My focusing is on this, uh, how language become the binding factor between the two uh, distinct. So in conclusion, what I'm saying is that the paper explores the historical links between a former colonial power, France, and its former colony, Senegal. The special relationship between the two countries predate the colonial period and has continued into the post-independence. The importance of French culture in strengthening the relationship, the relation cannot be overemphasized. This is the focus of this paper. Thank you. Thank you.